people, uh, I hope everyone's doing okay in the, the world ending days. This this ramble is going to be on what we look for, which is what I've the thing I've been thinking about recently. I mean that in a romantic sense, not like friendships or what you look for in a mango. In, in, a, in a romantic sense, what, how do we determine what it is that we search for uh, in a in a partner? Because I think that it can't just be biological. It can't just be something in your DNA. If that's the case, then uh, all poetry is meaningless because uh, nothing is uh, real. Everything's determined already in place. There has to be a reasoning for what we look for in a partner. I, I think there's two things. You've got attractive, so you've got like an attraction and a connection. They're the two main aspects in, in, in my mind. The attraction, there's lots of different things that people look for. A wide range, eyes, a body smile, in the hair for some people, whatever, whatever tickles your fancy. An attraction is the least important of the two, I think, for a relationship. Because, like, right, just sex, just, just, just sex, pure, pure, just animal uh, sex attraction, very useful. You need that. But in a relationship, you have to have the connection as well. You can't just have attraction. You can't just put up with an annoying, attractive person. You need to have a connection with them to be able to put up with their bullshit. But you do not need a connection for sex, you don't. You just need the attraction. Myself, what I look for is that feeling when you meet someone and they make you want to be a better person. I, I, I'm willing to be a better person. Two people I've, in my life I've met like that. One ended too fleetingly before it even got out of a spark phase, and the other was lingered too long, one could argue. But that's a different story. I think that uh, TVs, music, and songs. All of this, all movies and songs, I think they've given us a false sense of uh, relationships and love, which has damaged what we look for in someone. We have been shown this almost epic nature of uh, relationships, the idea that everything will work out in the end, which isn't true. We all know this isn't true, or we should do. That love conquers all, which is not the fucking case. Love rarely conquers a bomb. Throughout history, love's never conquered another nation, has it? The idea that there's a right time and a right place, taking away the idea that uh, a relationship is a risk. And that's, that's the thing, you look for someone who you're willing to take that risk with. But because of everything that we're told all the time, the idea of taking that risk is so scary that unless it's some uh, rain-sodden, run-through-a-fucking-airport love, then it's not real and there's no point risking anything for it. You can argue that um, the majority of relationships end. And so, even going into a relationship, the risk is much higher that it's not going to work. So should you risk it? You could say that you learn and you grow in a relationship. So that's, even if it ends, so there's a plus point there. But at that point, then you should mainly consider that relationships are closer to, like, a fucking university degree. Or, to, 
look at it like a, a phone contract. Something that's good there but will eventually end. It's going on a bit long now. I haven't solved anything. I think that we l I think we look for what can potentially fill our need, which isn't a perfect ending, but it's what we can do for now.